Okay, we're going to look at number three. It says test score follow a normal distribution with a mean of 73 and a standard deviation of 43. What is the percentile of a score of 61? So you're saying that you have the normal distribution of, it goes your mu and your standard deviation. So you got a piece of paper. Let's do number three. Okay, so here's how it goes. Number three says normal distribution of my mu with my standard deviation. My mu equals 73 and my standard deviation equals 4.3. It says test scores follow a normal distribution with a mean of 73 and standard deviation of 4.3. What is the percentile of score 61? So basically, you're just going to like that. You're going to build your normal curve. We know that the mean goes in the middle, and it's just 73. And then you're just going to do your standard deviations to the right and your standard deviations to the left. So when you're doing this, basically all you're doing is you're going to say 73 plus each standard deviation. So 73 plus 4.3, which is 77.3, and then plus 4.3, 81.6, and then the one on the right, plus 4.3, equals 85.9. The ones to the left, 73 minus 4.3, 68.7 minus 4.3, 64.4 minus 4.3, 60.1. And we know that 61 is gonna be right in here. This is 61. So we want to know the percentile and the area under the curve is going to be this teeny tiny area. So when you're putting this in the calculator, let's just go over what the buttons will be. It's going to be my normal CDF. Your lower bound is gonna be negative infinity. My upper bound is gonna be 61. My mu is gonna be 75. And my center deviation is gonna be 4.5, okay? And it's asking us for the score. What is the percentile of the score of 61? So we know it's gonna be in the lower percentile. So it's basically saying to us, okay, so then what's gonna be the area under the curve. So basically what you're saying is that the area under the curve is the percentile. So to get this, you're just going to go menu, statistics, and then you're going to go to distributions, normal CDF, and then that's negative infinity. Upper bound is going to be 61. Your mu is going to be 75, which is your mean, and your standard deviation is going to be 4.3. That's a 3. That's okay. So that means that this area right here, area equals 0 0.005565, 0 0.000565. So that means if I convert this up as a percent, and go one, two, I get zero percentile. And that's number three.
Okay, so here's number six. So the average war of a particular uh, FQR is 2.25. So the average is equal to the mean, which again is either X bar or the mu. So it's 2.25 with a standard deviation, which this is the symbol of equal to 0 0.5. What score was achieved by a student who scored in the 95th percentile? So when it gives you the 95th percentile, it's basically saying that that's the area. And the distribution scores are approximately normal, round to the nearest hundredths place. Okay, so basically it's saying that you have a normal curve with a 2.25 mean and a standard deviation of 0.5. So when you're doing this and you're looking at the standard curve, let's just build that out for you. So it's the standard curve. The middle is going to be 2.25. You need three standard deviations to the right, three standard deviations to the left. So then if we just add 2.25, let's see if my calculator will work. 2.25 plus 0.5. 2.75 plus 0 0.5, 3.25 plus 0 0.5, 3.75, 2.25 minus 0 0.5, 1.75 minus 0 0.5, 1.25, and then minus 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and we know we have a curve. The area is 95%, so that's between the second and third standard deviation, because we talked about that before, because in the empirical rule. Means all of this shaded is 95. So in the calculator, it's going to be inverse normal. Area mu equals 2.25, standard deviation equals 0 0.05. It's asking what the score was. So this is going to be the score, remember, or the z-score, because this right here is the z-score. And remember, everything under the curve is the area. So I'll do it on both calculators. Second bars, inverse normal. Area is 0.95. Mu is 2.25. Standard deviation 0.5. The tail is center. Paste. Okay. So you're going to get. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you on two different calculators. I had to turn off my uh, flash because it was creating a lot of glare. So again, you're gonna do an inverse normal. So this is a 84 plus, I'll also show you on the Inspire. You're gonna go to second VARS, oops, second VARS, and then you're gonna go to inverse normal. It's gonna be 0.95. Uh, your average is 2.25 and your standard deviation is going to be 0.5. Tell, you always want to do a default tail on the left. And then go down to pace and then enter. So your score is going to be 3.07. It adds to the hundreds place and that's going to be 7, 
two. So that's your score. Okay, so let's look at this on the Inspire. You're gonna go to Menu, Statistics, Distributions, Inverse Normal. The area is gonna be 0 0.95. Your, oops. And then your, I didn't change the, um, I didn't change the standard deviation, so that's why the operation's wrong. So go back here to inverse normal, and area is going to be 0.95, and then your mu is going to be 2.25, your standard deviation is going to be 0.5. You press enter, and there's your score 3.37243 or 3.5. 072. Okay, this is going to be number nine. The yearly average rainfall in Orlando is normally distributed with a mean of 52 inches. If the rainfall in Orlando it seeks 62 inches in 20 years, what is the standard deviation? Okay, so this one is a little bit different. Mm, I'm going to post it. So again, it gives us an area, but that's not the area we're going to be looking for. It says, if the rainfall in Orlando exceeds 62 inches in 20 years, what is the standard deviation? So what you need to know is you need to look for the 80% on this one because of your graph. Because you're going to look for the inverse normal because again, it gives you the area. So here's what we know. We know we have a normally distributed curve. We know that we have... Something happening here at 0 0.20. We know that this area is 0 0.80. And we know our mean is 52. We want to know what happens at 62 because we're assuming it's 20%. So that's this over here. We don't know our standard deviations. So Z equals X minus mu over standard deviation. So I need to find my Z right here. Again, we're gonna do inverse normal. I'm gonna say that my area that I'm looking for is 0 0.80, mu equals zero, uh, standard deviation equals one. Okay, and then we're gonna get our Z, and then we're gonna work from here. I'm gonna use an inspire I go to menu, statistics, distributions, inverse normal, and I'm going to do 0.8. My mu, I don't care about, my standard deviation, I don't care about, and I'm going to get 0 0.84. So now you know that Z equals 0 0.84. All right, now this is just math. So 0 0.84 equals X minus M over standard deviation. 0 0.84 equals 62 minus 52 over standard deviation. So that's 10 over standard deviation equals 0 0.84. over 1 equals 10 over standard deviation. Multiply both sides by standard deviation. 0 0.84 standard deviation equals 10 because those standard deviations cancel out divided by 0 0.84. 0 0.84. Ten divided by zero point eight four is eleven point nine. So standard deviation equals eleven point nine. That's your answer.